We are going to be reviewing two problems in Chapter 11. The first is on page 627, 1126A, and the second will be on the same page, 1127A. So you can access the information. We are going to go through the answer key. So let's first take a look at 1126A. In requirement one, they want us to compute Logan White's gross pay, payroll deductions, and net pay for the entire year of 2018. Now it's not normal for a company to wait an entire year to record payroll. They usually will be making the journal entries we're going to be looking at every pay period, whether they pay weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly. So let's read 1126A. Logan White is a GM of Value Point Salons. During 2018, White worked for the company all year at $13,600 per month salary. He also earned a year-end bonus equal to 15% of his entire year's pay salary. White's federal income tax withheld during 2018 was $1,360 per month plus $4,876 on his bonus check. His state income tax withheld came to $150 per month plus $60 on the bonus paycheck. FICA was withheld on the annual earnings as it normally will be according to the law. White authorized the following payroll deductions. Charity fund contribution, 1% of total earnings and life insurance deduction of $40 per month. Value Point incurred payroll tax expense on White for FICA tax as well and the company also paid state unemployment tax and federal unemployment tax. So that's our word problem. Now we got to break it out and compute these various items in the requirements. So the first thing we're going to do, and this is always the first step of your payroll um, recording, is to rec um, determine the gross pay, payroll deductions, and net pay for the employee. So we're going to do this for the entire year. So remember, gross pay is salary, or a person's paid hourly, the number of hours times their hourly rate, or if they're paid a commission, or any bonuses. These are all part of gross pay. Gross pay is really what the employer owes to the employee. So we'll take the 13,600 monthly salary times 12. We get $163,200. We're going to add to that a bonus of 15% of that annual amount of 163,200 or 24,480. So his total gross pay, what he earned, and he's truly entitled to, and the company is going to pay out, is $187,680. However, the employer is either required by law to not pay him out all that money, but keep some of it back, withhold or deduct, because there's laws that require it for various items, like taxes, federal tax, state taxes, local taxes, Social Security and Medicare tax. Or maybe they're voluntary. Maybe they're just deductions that the employer offers. You know, oh, would you like to donate to the charity fund, Logan? Yes, I would. Well, then we'll take the money out of your paycheck. You won't have to worry about writing out a check. Would you like a life insurance policy that you will pay for? We'll take that money out of your paycheck as well. You won't have to go get your own and pay the premium separately. So what did he have deducted from his paycheck? Well, first off, there was federal income tax of $1,360 a month times 12 for 12 months. And add to that the additional $4,876 out of his bonus pay, uh, paycheck. So his total federal income tax deducted. So the employer never pays this to Logan. They pull it out, they keep it aside, and then they pay it to the federal government on behalf of Logan. They're required by law to do that. Same type of computation for state income tax. He lives in a state that has the state income tax. So $150 a month was withheld from his paycheck times 12 months. 
plus the $60 bonus um, check he had state income tax taken out for. So a total of $1,860 is going to be sent to the state government on Logan's behalf by his employer. Is that the employer's money? No, it, it was it's Logan's. But instead of giving it to Logan and then having him write a check to the state or the federal government, the government says, no, don't even give it to them. You keep it back and send it to us on their behalf. And they're required by law to do that. Now, in the next computation, FICA OASDI, remember that stands for Old Age Survivor Disability Insurance. In our book, um, because this number changes each year, you're, the employer only is required, and an employee is only required to pay on so much of their gross pay each year. So the tax is computed on the first 118500 in this particular year. I could tell you in 2018 or 2017, that number is 127900 but we're not worried about that. We're worried about it for the book, for, for our purposes. So not all the 187680 he made will be taxed at 6.2% because that's the law. Only the first 118500 of his gross pay for the year. So 6.2% of the gross pay. Reminder, taxes are always computed on gross pay. We don't subtract anything out as far as we're concerned. So his total Social Security or OASDI payment is $7,347. They mean the same thing. The other part of FICA is Medicare. Remember, Medicare goes to fund um, the insurance for people who are taking Medicare. And that is based on all the person's gross pay. So all 187,680 will be multiplied by that percentage. And that's a statutory percentage. It's the same every year, 6.2 and 1.45. And it has been for years. Okay, so 2,700. And we simply take what we just did and fit it into accounts. Now, in the problem, it tells us his salaries should go into salary expense and the bonus should go into bonus expense. But in the end, they're both expenses. Yeah, gross pay is always an expense to the company. And if you think about it, that money is either going directly to Logan or being given to someone else for Logan. What, um, what do we mean by that? Well, let's take a look. Remember, $21,196 was withheld from Logan's pay for federal income tax purposes. The day we withhold that at um, the uh, Value Point Salons, we have to make a journal entry as part of his payroll journal entry where we credit a current liability federal income tax is payable because that same day that tax that we withheld from Logan's paycheck is a liability to us. We owe that to the federal government on Logan's behalf and you'll see on requirement five what happens when we actually pay it. 
Same with the state income taxes that we withheld out of his paycheck. That will go in another current liability account called state income taxes payable. We will credit that for 1860 the total amount. The FICA OASDI goes in a current liability called tax, um, taxes payable, 7347 Credit that. Increase all those current liabilities. FICA Medicare taxes payable will be increased on the credit side, 2721. So you can see we have a lot of new current liabilities. That's why we present payroll in the current liability chapter. Then we have charity fund payable. Yeah, the company has to pay that money withheld from Logan's paycheck to the charity fund. So as of the day the salary is created and recorded, that's a liability to the company, $1,877 in the credit. And then life insurance payable. Credit that for $480. So all the withholdings are current liabilities to the company until they are paid. And then the net pay, the amount that gets paid to Logan, assuming we pay him that day and they tell us that, will be a credit to cash because the company is writing him out a paycheck for $152,199. So that is how the company records and determines an employee's paycheck. Now we're going to go back to requirement two because the employer's not done. This is what the employee sees and those of us who work, that's what we see. But what else does the employer have to do? In requirement two, I'm focused on the second part that says employer payroll taxes. In requirement two, it wants to know what's the total payroll expense the company has to pay because they employ Logan. Well, we already figured out the first part of all of the payroll expense, his gross pay, 187680 But in addition to that, the employer also has to pay employer payroll taxes. These are special taxes the employer pays because they have employees. You can see there, the first two are FICA OASDI and FICA Medicare. The employer must match they must match the employee's payroll amounts. Okay, so I wanted to double check something because I don't really. <sighs> Give me one second. I just noticed this. Okay, it's okay. Um, they must match the OSDI, the 118,500 times 6.2 percent. So whatever the employee is paying, the employer is paying also. 7,347 and then they also have to pay the Medicare match. 187,680 times 1.45 percent 2721. So not only does the government get money from the employee through payroll withholding, but on top of that, the employer also has to match that and send the same amount in um, as employer payroll taxes. So that's an additional expense to the employer. The other two taxes are unemployment tax. The first one is federal unemployment tax or the acronym FUTA. It's that tax, as you saw in your chapter, is only computed. Well, first of all, it's not a tax to an employee, it is tax to an employer. But the employer determines the tax by using the employee's gross pay. And the rule is the employer must pay unemployment tax or determine it on the first $7,000 of an employee's pay for the year. So once an employee makes $7,000, the employer no longer has to use that employee's gross pay to determine how much tax they owe for unemployment purposes. So federal unemployment is 0.6% of the first $7,000 that an employee makes. Logan made more than $7,000 in gross pay for the year. So 0.6% times $7,000, the federal unemployment tax, $42. The state unemployment tax will be determined at 5.4% of the first 7,000 of an employee's gross pay. These percentages are in your chapter, by the way, or $378.
So in addition to having to pay out a total of 187,680 just in gross pay for Logan, they also have to pay an additional $10,488 of employer payroll taxes, and that's those four items added up. So an employer is not done once they determine employee's paycheck. So the total payroll expense, what does Logan cost them in total? 198,168. So the next step after you've determined the employer payroll taxes is to journalize them. So we find we use a separate expense account called payroll tax expense. And we debit it for the total. And then we will credit each liability account. And if we don't have a liability account, we create one. So we will credit the FICA OASDI taxes payable for $73.47. We'll credit the FICA Medicare taxes payable for that amount. Credit federal unemployment taxes payable for $42. And then state unemployment taxes payable $378. So we must create a current liability account for each one of those to store them in until we pay them. Because, and when I say we, I mean ValuePoint, because ValuePoint owes that money. So that's how we record the employee's payroll with the journal entry, the employer's payroll taxes with the journal entry. The final requirement says, how about paying all these things? What happens when they pay all of those items? Well, just like when you pay any other liability, you must debit it, you decrease it. So they'll debit employee federal income taxes payable, 21196. They'll debit employee state income taxes payable for the 1860. They'll debit the FICA OASDI for $14,694. Remember that we credited that twice, once when we recorded Logan's paycheck and when we recorded the employer payroll taxes. The same thing happened with the Medicare taxes payable, so we'll be debiting that for $54,42. Charity fund payable is debited for $18,77. Life insurance payable for $80 federal unemployment taxes payable 42 and the state unemployment taxes payable 378. Why are we debiting them? Because we're paying them now. And I say we, Value Point Salons is writing out a check and paying off all of those items that they owe because they have Logan as an employee. So we credit cash for the total of 45,969. Okay, so that is how we handle payroll. I'm next going to go to 1127A. Now in 1127A we have Plymouth Pharmacies and they incurred some transactions. We need to create the journal entries for them and they're really dealing with sales tax and notes payable here so we'll get a good understanding of those items. And here are the journal entries. Let's take a look at January 9th. Purchased a computer equipment at a cost of $12,000. The company signed a six month, 9% no payable for that amount. Okay, so they debit computer equipment, increase your equipment account, and will increase the liability notes payable for the 12,000 because they're going to pay back the 12,000 plus interest. Now on the 29th, the company recorded the week sales of $63,000. Three quarters of them are on credit and one quarter of them are on cash. These sales are also subject to a 6% state sales tax. So first let's do the easy thing. Let's record the sales. So we'll credit sales $63,000. The company is also responsible for collecting sales tax on that $63,000 at 6%. That 3780 is put into a sales tax payable account. Um, so th just to stop there and think about this, remember, um, a company is like an agent. The government wants taxes. The customers are the ones who have to pay them. The company is in the middle. They collect, the company collects the sales tax. It's never really theirs. They owe it immediately to the government. So that's why we put that sales tax in a sales tax payable account. 
We don't set up a separate cash account to keep track of it, no. All of the money collected goes into our cash account. We just know we owe 3780 out as sales tax. Now, they said three quarters of the 63, or I do the first one, a quarter of the 63,000, so 63,000 times a quarter is 15,750. 